Hey again, welcome in that second video um, about the Stadium tutorial for Golem. In this video, I will show you how you can convert um, uh, here. It's going to be a mocap animation, but how you can convert any uh, animation you can open within Maya for Golem. And uh, even if this animation has not been made on the characters you're going to use at the end, which is actually the case here. So I'm having uh, that uh, pretty long uh, mocap animation here, uh, which is almost a thousand frame. And uh, it's just um, you know a stand, uh, sit and watching animation of uh, a character. So um, that character has some geometry on it that we don't really care. It obviously has a skeleton, which is what we care more about. So the same way we use the character maker to convert a character, we're going to need here uh, the character maker once again first to define the hierarchical structure of the skeleton for that mocap and um, and to use that skeleton to export the animation. So I'm going to jump into the character maker locator, go back into uh, character mode and once again I will have to define my skeleton because here the skeleton uh, for the mocap is different than the, the skeleton for the character. So I need to specify once again where are the arms, where are the legs, uh, which one are the fingers and in which direction does the limb bend. So once again I need to import, load that skeleton, specify what's going to be um, the front and uh, the up axis. So here those are correct. Uh, once again, I need to specify what's going to be the detection mode for that character. So I've got uh, three different ways. I've got joint orient. So joint orient reads the joint orientation, but you can see that my characters is going to be below the ground. So that's not exactly what I need. Uh, I have bind pose. So bind pose place my character in the middle of the scene with the feet at the correct height. So that sounds pretty good. And the T pose looks, looks actually pretty correct. Or current values and current values obviously is definitely not what I need because current values means that the character maker will have the exact same posture that when I'm having within Maya so that's not a T pose at all. So for sure current values is not the way to go. I'm, I'd rather go with uh, the bind pose which is actually what I need. Excellent. So same as previously now I need to define how does my skeleton looks like so I need to auto compute the skeleton mapping. So this analyze the structure of the skeleton and uh, and tries to figure out what is what. So it has a hips, uh, which is going to be dead bone here, spine, which goes from spine to spine free, uh, right leg, which goes from the up leg to the ankle. So that looks good. We don't really need to convert uh, the animation from um, the toes. So I'm just going to erase those toes um, nodes. I'm going to erase the toes nodes for the left leg as well. Um, I'm going to keep here the fingers, but uh, at the end, my stadium character doesn't have, it just has one finger. So at least I'm going to convert uh, all the animation and at least one of this finger will be replied on my character and that will be good enough. And uh, I'll have to check uh, maybe how does... Uh, how does the character look like within my uh, locator? So I can uh, perform a quick check, check how does the limb bend. I can also check maybe quickly how does the finger bend. And from what I see so far, that doesn't look really good. Well, first thing is here, you can see my fingers, they've been split into two, um, into two sub limbs. Uh, one part, which is uh, here, if we go there, we can see and if we just let the tool clip get displayed. So we get an auxiliary part and an extension part. So that bone has been divided in two parts. That limb has been divided in two parts. So the IK will be performing two parts and that's not what I want. I want the whole finger to bend uh, uniformly. So I want that finger, that bone, that bone and that bone to be part of the same limb. So having the same color. So I'm going to quickly fix this. If I right click on the, the node, I'm having a, you can see here, I'm having a quick tool which allows me to remap the auxiliary, the auxiliary part of the, the node. So the yellow part here and the extension part of the node and put this all into the extension. So that first bone here will be set here. That last bone here will be set here. So uh, remap. 
Oh, no, that was the other one. Oh, crap. Um, let me recompute the autoskeleton. Okay, good. And we, okay, and we delete those nodes here. Sorry about that. Uh, and we delete this. Okay. And let's do it correctly now. So, okay, zoom here. So what I need is to remap up this X as an extension only, as an extension only, once again. And you can see dynamically that now they all uh, are the same chain. So that's good. And do that on the other fingers. X, 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 X. One last thing I may want to do is uh, my chain here, at the end, it doesn't have any orientation. The last orientation is going to be uh, on that bone because here the skinning is not influenced by that bone. It's just a display information. The skinning gets influenced by that bone instead. So I may want to remove the tip. So I may want to have the bone a bit shorter. So let's remove the tip. Let's remove the tip again, 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 and again. Okay, and finally on the other end as well. Let's remove the tip, remove the tip, tip, and remove the tip. Okay, and uh, once again, you can see that the bone don't bend into the right, oops, into the right direction. So they bend in really awkward direction here. So I need to just quickly fix uh, those IK planes so they are all bending in the right direction. So I just uh, you know change uh, the list until I find something I'm happy with. So that's actually the good way to go here. So it's going to be minus Z. So let's fix this to go to minus Z here. Same thing here there and what about uh, the thumb the thumb looks correct to me so let's fix those on the other side so minus minus c minus c minus c here and the thumb correct as well okay so I've checked good so now my uh, conversion character file is ready. So I can save that one here. I don't need to define the geometry because uh, obviously that character doesn't have any geometry and it's not gonna be used to do a simulation. It's just gonna be used to make a conversion of uh, an animation. So I'm just gonna store this as um, stadium motion character. Uh, it's template here. Okay, it means that every time I'm gonna convert an animation from that um, motion capture rig, I'll be able to use that guy here. So that's really convenient. Let's say I've got 100 motions, I can just save this guy here and process all my 100 motions using uh, that character file I just defined. Good, so what about the way I convert an animation? So I can just draw, go into the motion tab here and uh, within the motion tab, the first option which is available to me is load motion from selection. So first I need to select my root bone. I need to make sure that within the character tab, there's a skeleton defined because it's gonna use what's been defined right now. And I'm gonna press load motion from selection. So it's gonna read every frame um, and uh, read the orientations on every bone and uh, store that. You want to make sure if you're using some um, uh, keyframe animation, you want to make sure that you've baked all the controllers before and uh, that everything is uh, written as a keyframe. And once you're done with that, um, should be good. So let's take a look. Um, next to my character, I've got my, once again, my display for my, um, what I'm gonna convert. So I can check if that goes well. So apparently that goes pretty well. And uh, they move the same way and the animation looks pretty alike. Okay, uh, what else do I need to do? Well, maybe uh, as here, it's uh, I'm using a mocap animation. Maybe you notice that it's not looping correctly, like the last frame and the end frame are different. So I'm gonna use Golem here to fix this. So first I want to fix um, the heading orientation offset. So during the whole animation here of the mocap, the character, um, it, it offsets its orientation by five degrees during the whole duration of that animation. So 
First thing I want to do is remove this. I don't want it to shift health at the end of the simulation. It will turn on itself at 360 degrees and that's clearly not what we'd like to. Then we want to do some blending. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna stick with those parameters here. So it says what is the first frame I want to blend in from. So here is the st first frame of the animation. What is the last frame I want to blend to? So this is the last frame of the animation. So I'm good with that. And um, and uh, how do I want to blend? So it means that it will compare the first frame and the last frame, and it will just do a, a quick offset repartition during the whole duration of the animation. So we're going to compute what's the difference between this frame and this frame. So it's going to be a couple of degrees per um, per bone. And we're going to add those couple of degrees on top of it as a, as a layer. So if I press apply here, you may notice that apparently it hasn't changed at all. It, but if I go now from frame 62 to the last frame, you can see that those two frames are now similar. So same posture. but if I take a look at the animation, it, it's almost the same thing than the source. It's just that now we had a bit of error correction to be able to reach the last frame from the first frame. Okay, good. So nice. We make a, a pretty nice looping animation. So what else do I need to do? The last thing I need to do is compute the footprints. I need to specify where does those legs here are in contact with the ground. So as it's a set animation, apparently they're in contact for the whole duration of that animation. So um, I need to compute the footprint. So on which limb do I need to compute the footprint? So it's looking at um, the name of the node here, uh, left arm, left leg. So what I want to compute the footprints on are gonna be left leg and right leg. Um, what's the speed threshold? So under which speed? do I consider that a foot is in contact with the ground? Because if you just consider the height of your um, of your um, limb, maybe it goes really close to the ground, but it goes super fast. Let's say um, you're doing a football kick uh, in, a, in a soccer ball. Um, well, your leg will get really close to the ground, but it will get close with a pretty high speed. So you want to make sure not to detect those as a footprint. So here, well, those are just some random value here. Um, I put a high uh, threshold and a high ground height. So I make sure that for the whole duration of my animation, um, my footprints are going to be there. Um, the nice thing is, if you're not happy with that, you can go into the character maker locator. And those are just um, those are just the keyframes you can see here uh, on the, the two parts of uh, the timeline. Uh, there are some keyframes. So you can reanimate this uh, if you go into the uh, graph editor, um, you can go into the left leg and see with the footprint and you can reanimate this. Uh, one is going to be in contact with the ground, uh, zero is going to be uh, uh, no contact. So it's up to you to reanimate this if you're not happy with that. So here I'm actually, you know what, I'm actually happy with that animation. And when I'm done with that animation, I can just save that animation as a new clip. So I'm going to save that uh, within my project, within Golem, create a motions folder. And I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna call that sit watching. Um, the same way I, I've tested my um, animation, um, the same way I've tested my character file earlier, um, I always like to test my motion files. Like every time uh, I create a new one, to just to make sure that um, every time I'm gonna drop it within the project is gonna be valid, and I don't have to you know process something else while I'm here within that character maker and uh, within, um, uh, within the motion exporter uh, tool. So let's go back in my uh, loop dev scene I had earlier. Um, usually I just create a new instance of this. So I'm gonna create a save save as, and I'm gonna call that um, motion test scene. Um, okay, so this is my loop dev scene. I can go back uh, in simulation mode. So now my characters, yeah, they, they simulate. And what I do is I just drop a motion behavior. And every time I've got a new motion, I just uh, re-import that new motion here. So I can go within Golem, motions, set watching animation. And uh, that creates a new entry for my behavior. It's looping. Um, if I play it like this, I will get just get all my characters playing the same frame. So I want to test the whole range of my animation. So. I'm going to change the start person, so it means that it, it's going to start like um, in every 
at every it could start at every frame of the animation okay and I'm gonna increase maybe this a bit how many frames I want my simulation to be so now I can see the whole variety of my motion which is a thousand frame uh, my characters all picked a different um, frame within the animation and they play it from here I can check if it's looping correctly if I see any uh, in twitch in the animation uh, right now you can see they're flying above the ground well the thing is not even there's not even a ground so that's why they're flying uh, we don't have specify right now that there is a terrain in the scene so I need to actually add a terrain so just by clicking on that node here that creates a default terrain and that default terrain specified that the way we're gonna add that to the ground is a default plane which is gonna be at the origin of the world and uh, there aren't any obstacles, uh, so there's nothing to avoid. But as soon as I've created that terrain node, I can press play and now I'm having my characters getting adapted to the ground, playing my um, nice animation and uh, looping correctly. So sweet. Um, obviously, if I've got uh, 20 animations, I need to go through the same process, uh, which is um, opening my character file getting into my motion tab, importing the motion, um, computing the footprints, and uh, exporting this. If you want to automate this, you can go uh, on our website, and if you check within the technical documentation, mail or Python command, glm export motion, uh, this is the command you can use to export a motion file. So if, you, if you've got like plenty of animation, it could be a nice idea to uh, figure out a template on how you export animation. So what are usually the parameters you put into um, the editing orientation on which limb you compute the footprints and uh, you can just process this directly within that command and automatically export um, Maya files as a, as a new motion files, as golem motion files. So um, I hope it makes sense and uh, see you in the next video.